Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So here for another um, episode of our journal that we're making using some of our mass made items. So I'm just going to, you know, pick a couple of things from here that I might use because um, I was obviously trying to think what we hadn't used so far, what type of piece. So we hadn't used these types of envelopes that we'd made and I don't think we have used these yet. Uh, and I think we've used, I think we've used quite a lot of the different types of pieces. So I think we're, yeah, uh, we've got the flippy pads, but obviously, well, I guess I could use that actually in here. Well, let's see how, <clears throat> how we get on, excuse me. Um, I've pulled out a few pieces there because I don't know what colours I'll be going with. So, pop that on the floor out of the way. Now, if you're just joining me for the first time in this series, I will try and remember to link the um, playlist of the other videos. But what we have been doing, basically, is I'd had a few requests for how to use the mass-made items that we had been making on the Tuesday workshops that we do. Uh, so I thought it would be a nice thing to come along and do a journal showing you how to use some of your mass made pieces in a journal. So what I did, um, and I am not saying that this is how everyone has to do it. I chose a theme that I was going to make a journal with. So my theme was this gorgeous pets book and that's where the basis of my journal has come from so and by the basis I don't mean the pages themselves I mean my decoration um that's where that has come from and the kind of flow now is tied together with the obviously animal theme so we have done quite a lot of the pages but we've still got you know quite a fair few to go um and I've talked about this so many times before, I know I'm just like repeating myself, but I don't really work, you know, um, uh, page by page. I just flick through and see where I might fancy decorating next. So we've got the middle page here, which obviously is a double page spread. Now, personally, I would kind of want that tying in somehow be that color wise or theme wise or something, you know, because it's obviously not only a facing page but it's actually the same page you know it's from the same piece of paper so I'm going to just have a look through my little images here from the book and decide what I've got that would go together quite nicely in the journal I have got these gorgeous birds here so I'm just going to tear this out like that and then I've got the ducks, which I know obviously one is ducks, one is birds, but I mean, they're all feathered friends, aren't they? Um, and they are very similar colours. So I might just tear the ducks out. And the other one that I've got is the chaffinch or the cardinal. So I'm going to tear all of those out and then I can place them all on here and decide which one I'm going to go with. So just tear that out like that. Okay. Right, so just want to choose now from these four which two that I'm going to want to go with. And the reason I say two is because obviously I want one thing this side and one thing this side. Um let's have a look and decide. So I've pulled in a few pieces that we could use, oops, from the mass made items. And I've pulled in obviously the envelopes here, or an, an envelope, and I've also got one of those side loading pockets. Now obviously they're not the same colour, but they're pretty good tone, aren't they? So I could go with something like these on the, on the middle page because obviously they will go really nicely together um you know which is you know personally I think kind of nice to do so just now need to decide which items 
out of these that I want to use and it's such a struggle because I really love them all to be honest. So this one here obviously is not the widest. I might be um, dictated to by the size that I can fit on there. So if I just tear this chaff inch down, actually I don't know whether he was a chaff inch, I don't know why I said that. I'm just going to show my ignorance completely when it comes to wildlife and birds and things now. Um, <laughs> I obviously saw that name somewhere when I was tearing the pages out and thought, oh, that's him. It might not be. So really sorry if I've now described him as something he's not. There we go. Um, either way, he's, he's nice, isn't he? And this bird here has got this red kind of um, bit here, which just picks up that. So I might go with these, I think. So I'm just going to tear those down. Again, like that. Okay, there's still a little bit on the big side for that, but I can... I can adjust those so well unless I did go for that because actually this one's not so tall I think this image is um, slightly shorter maybe I should go for this oh, u-turn you see at the last moment this book had some scribble on it so I'm just going to kind of tear around and try and get rid of that you know that's how it was when I bought it okay Right, uh, oh, I don't think I am going to go with him actually now because his head is chopped off by the envelope flap where the other one, it had two birds. So this bird I think was chopped off completely but the other one, you could see his head. So, right, U-turn is reversed now. <laughs> so I've gone back to my original, original plan. Okay. <coughs> So again, all you want to do now is obviously decorate up your, your pieces and your images. Let's have a look and see what I've got here that I could use. So I'm just going to pull in a little bit of book page. See whether we might want to layer this on a little bit of book page or something. Just going to tear this down slightly here. So if we'd have him like that. Just tear that round there. So, I mean, I really do hope that you're getting some um, inspiration and some ideas really from this series of how to use your mass make um, items. I mean, it will give you an idea, if nothing else, as to just how many things that you need. Well, I mean, you don't absolutely definitely need them, but you know, it will give you a bit of an insight, I suppose, as to just how much goes into filling a journal. Because obviously you start out with all those mass makes and think, oh, wow, I've, you know, I've got tons and tons here. And of course, I've still got tons left. Um, but I mean, my average, I think, think on those mass makes is around 14 that we seem to be making per episode I mean obviously it depends on the style of the embellishment type um but I don't know how many weeks worth I've got there I tend to I think put about 19 pages is ringing a bell worth of embellishments in a journal so although we've got 14 of each thing I don't think I'm up to 19 different types of embellishments yet in the mass make um, or mass made items, if that all makes sense. So, although it sounds like, you know, <laughs> there's loads there, it would only take 14 journals and those items would be gone. And actually, it would really be less than 14 journals because... Um, a lot of those items you may use more than one of per journal. 
does that make sense? And also, I realise that, you know, to 14, uh, to, um, you know, when you're starting out, 14 journals does sound like loads, and you kind of think, well, 14 journals, that's, that's loads. And I completely agree. Um, it is a lot of journals, and that's a lot of work and a lot of time it would take you to do that. But, I mean, if you're trying to make journals, obviously, to sell and things then you'd be wanting to probably make them quite quickly. And so those supplies would actually run out, you know, reasonably quickly. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that's just how I kind of think of it, I suppose. Um, I mean, I don't tend to always make journals now because I make different things. And obviously, because I'm doing the, you know, a lot of videos, it actually stops you making journals because you're making videos. It's taking up the time that I would have spent making journals, if that makes sense. Um, but when I wasn't doing so many videos and I was doing more journals, I it would probably take me like a week to make a journal. And um, so if I kind of think of it like that, then 14 journals, 14 weeks, and all those items would be gone. And like we just said, actually you tend to use more than one piece I know this is all getting very waffly and complicated but you tend to use more than one piece or one of each of those pieces you know you may use in a journal so actually instead of 14 journals you might only actually manage to achieve say nine journals out of that box in which case, if you're making one a week, that's nine weeks and all your stash would be gone. So does that make sense? I don't know what value that's added to anybody, to be honest, but... <laughs> I guess I'm just trying to sort of highlight that... Although it seems like, wow, all this stuff, it does go pretty quickly once you get using it all. Is the point that I was very clumsily, obviously, trying to make, but... Oh dear. <laughs> I don't even know where that came from, to be honest, that whole protracted saga as to um, how long your mass made items would last. But I mean, I always remember um, Rachel from Roxy Creations when she was doing her 100 day project and thinking, you know, she had made, I mean, 100 days she made things, you know. But actually, they probably all went pretty quickly because actually, you know, although 100 days, obviously, is, of course, it's a long time and, you know, she'd made a lot of stuff. Once she started using those things in her journals, she probably ran out, you know, quicker than, quicker than you'd think. Um, I mean, that's just my opinion, but yeah, I just think actually you can never have enough ready-made stuff I mean for me definitely this tactic or technique of making the blank but not decorating this is definitely for me working out really well um, because obviously now you know I'm able to take these items and just coordinate them and do them exactly to fit in with you know whatever my theme of my project is going to be so for me, definitely, I really like the just making the blank item and not decorating it. Um, but I mean, that's just, again, that's just personal preference and you may prefer to actually decorate all of yours up. Let me just get rid of that. There we go. Okay. Okay, looking good now. Uh, I have got this ribbon again, so that might be quite nice just on the edge of the envelope. Looks quite pretty, doesn't it? So I might pop that on there, I think. Now, do we want to ruffle it? No, I'm not going to ruffle it because um, that, although I love that look, it does obviously add quite a bit of bulk onto there. So um, I will just glue that down. Oops, there we go. My son trod mud all over the house. It was all over his work boots and um, although he takes them off when he comes in, 
obviously then he got up the next day you know got ready for work and then put them on and walked around the house and by that point the, the mud had obviously dried and has come off all over the carpet so if you can hear the hoover I do apologize it's obviously I've I've made him hoover up where he's now trodden the mud all over the house I mean I did pick up some of the bigger clumps but just thought actually no I'm going to make him hoover it up and then hopefully hopefully he won't do that well he probably still will to be honest I don't think he was overly bothered at having to hoover up to be honest right okay so I've got those bits there now do I want some string around here to keep this envelope closed or do we just want to sort of paper clip it closed let's have a look I don't know why I think I'm obviously avoiding string a little bit because <laughs> lots of people didn't like it in one of the things that I made and um, I wasn't sure whether they just didn't like it on that project or whether they just didn't like it per se really uh, let's just check what items we have got string on so we've got some string obviously on the envelope there and we've got some string on here. Well, we could have some more string, to be honest. So again, I might use that um, cute baker's twine in the grey because um, it's kind of quite cute to have a bit of a different colour. So I'll just tie that round like that. Oops cut that down, get that out of the way. So I hope everyone's having a good day. You probably were until you listened to me waffling on about the how long your mass makes are going to last. Uh, yeah, hope that you're all having a good day. Hope you're getting some crafting done. As I say, I mean, I really hope that you're getting some, um, you know, inspiration and suggestions, I guess, ideas. Not really suggestions but maybe ideas as to how your mass made stuff can be used there we go I'm just going to glue that down on the back now I used to always cover this with another piece of paper but I don't know whether that's necessary to be honest I think maybe I was just um, you know worried about it coming unstuck but I mean actually I don't think it really does so you know, I think that's good enough like that. Right, now this one here, I'm going to pop there and I'm just wondering whether we could have like maybe a bit of ribbon. Uh, we could maybe actually just have some ribbon here going off to the side. So I'm just going to cut this off. Oops. Gosh, I've got just stuff literally dropping everywhere now. And then that's kind of like a little tab there for the the page as well, but it's coming out from behind the the pocket, which I quite like that. So just glue this together like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to glue this onto there. Okay, so I probably have now glued that too far in and it won't even over the, overlap the page at all. That's just the type of thing that's likely to happen, to be honest. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, we could have him right on the edge, I guess, and that way he definitely is creating a tab. Oh, well, that's... That's good enough, isn't it? I mean, I quite like that. It's just a little loop. Oh, talking of loops. Did anyone else see the um, Natasha from Treasure Books, her pen loops? Um, it was several weeks ago now, but oh, what a clever idea. So um, yeah, I might have to make some of those. They looked really cool. Now I've got some other hand stitched ruffles here. So I'm just wondering whether we could
probably like that and then I'm just going to pull in a couple of other ruffles so hold on two moments please because I stitched a load more ruffles yesterday so I've got like lots more now again using all those gorgeous gorgeous green fabrics that Laura had gifted me um, which I just love using things like this you know things like these green fabrics with the sort of children's image books or book book images they just look so adorable don't they really really cute so <clears throat> let's have a look now now the only thing is I can't obviously put a ruffle down here because it would be in the way of the envelope so that being the case if I want one down the side it's going to have to go on this side which I don't mind that actually it looks quite nice let's have a look possibly a, that colour is better or do we like the contrast? I mean, contrast is always quite fun too, isn't it? Now you see, then I have a bit of an issue with I don't want to put these together really because they don't go. So let me just go back into my little hand stitched ruffles and I have one there that does go. It's the, you know, the same fabric. We could have that maybe Maybe there or something. Yes, I quite like that. So what I'm going to do is just stick, oops, stick this piece on here. Like that. Okie dokie. I am very, very, very excited at the moment because, um, or not at the moment, but today, oh, I have been having technical issues, as you guys probably know, uh, for the longest time now with the ugh, running out of storage space and, oh, it's just been like, ugh, endless, endless problems with my iPad and, um, you know, taking forever then, uploading a video and... Oh, it's just a nightmare. And literally, you know, I normally like to condense and kind of film, you know, several videos in one day kind of thing. And then they're there ready to upload. Well, I couldn't do that because, um, is that just covering up that loop? Oh, I don't mind that. I think it still looks quite nice even covering up the loop. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, what was I saying? Um, yes, so anyway, it was taking a really long time and, you know, very, very irritating because actually I could only do one video, then I'd have to upload it, which sometimes can just take absolutely hours. And if for any reason, like the other day where the phone rang and the doorbell went and I had to do the video then in, you know, a couple of stages then heaven forbid that I actually then had to edit the video, i.e. join it together using iMovie, because then invariably I would have all these errors saying it didn't have enough space to join them together, and oh, it just was becoming a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. So literally, to do that one, you know, one hour video was kind of taking like the whole day, really, um, by the time that I'd had to muck about trying to delete things out and... Oh, then it would really slowly kind of join them together, then upload it, then I would have to delete it and for some reason restart the machine, you know, the uh, the iPad for it to actually recognise that it's been deleted, um, to free up the space to be able to do another video. So it had all become just, well, to say frustrating is like an understatement. It was becoming really unworkable. To the point, I was kind of thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to actually have to buy a new iPad, you know, to do this on. And I've only actually had my iPad for two years. So, you know, that was pretty irritating, to be honest, and pretty gutting. Anyway, having done lots of research, because I kept just assuming it was my photos that were taking up all the space. And um, 
you know, I would move a lot of photos off and delete them off and things. And still, it was, you know, still having issues. Um, anyway, when I then really looked into it properly, which, I mean, it sounds really stupid, but <laughs> it obviously took me a while to fathom all these things out. Um, it transpired that my YouTube app was really the thing hogging all the space. So, I mean, I don't even recall installing YouTube when I got my iPad two years ago. I don't know whether it actually comes with an iPad on there already. I'm, you know, I don't know. But I mean, obviously, it's the app that I use the most, you know, using it all the time, both watching and um, uploading to and things. And um, it was just really strange because it was taking up, I think I have like 128 gig of space and it was taken up 77 gig of that space was the I uh, the, the YouTube app which I mean that is just crazy isn't it it was you know taking all that space and I think my photos were actually only taking oh, I don't recall the actual amount but um not so much anyway just got this flower which no no, no, no. Um, I'm going to glue this down. I might put something behind it, but I can't decide at the moment. So I'm going to glue it down like a top loading pocket in the first instance. Um, anyway, so researching it and everything, it would seem that like the cash had obviously been, you know, growing and growing. And I mean, I think the cache is like data connected to your activity is my understanding of that. And um, it had obviously been growing and growing. Now, whether or not there was actually an issue, something wrong with it, and that's why it had grown so large, or it might be where obviously I upload videos, maybe that will get stored in the cache. I really don't know. Um, anyway, I was very, very, very nervous because you couldn't seem to clear the cache. The only way to clear the cache on the iPad was to, to delete the app and then reload it. Well, obviously, I thought, oh, my gosh, I hope I don't lose all my channel content, you know. Um, anyway, I obviously looked a little bit more and everywhere seemed to suggest that you wouldn't lose your channel content. You know, you would just kind of clear your cache effectively. Right. These are the flowers that I used the other day that I've cut one out of. So I'm just going to utilise the rest of that, popping it behind those birds. Um, anyway, so eventually I built up the courage and I removed the YouTube app. And then really quickly, as soon as it was removed, I reinstalled it from the App Store, which actually it kind of had a cloud image so it obviously was just up on the cloud somewhere didn't kind of need to really reinstall but just download again from the cloud and oh my gosh I couldn't believe it now my space was like 40 gig used out of the 128 instead of before it had been 118 was used out of the 128 so fingers crossed now I don't you know, I don't want to tempt fate here and kind of think that I'm out of the woods just yet. But fingers crossed, it's now going to be, you know, working a dream. I really hope. So, yeah, fingers crossed. I don't want to, yeah, tempt fate by saying it too much. But, wow, it would be amazing if it was now sorted and solved because it has literally been the bane of my life for the longest time to be quite honest actually I might just pop that because I've already inked the back of that one so let me just get another one that I haven't inked the back of these are Rachel's labels um labels for is what these are I love these they're really useful just my type of thing um yeah anyway so fingers crossed I feel like I am not going to know myself if this works and obviously it was only actually today that I have done this so today is the test 
but fingers crossed I'm really praying and praying that I'm going to be able to just run with this now and literally film maybe like four videos today and then upload them this evening instead of how I've been having to do it for the last goodness knows how long. Um, so it will be amazing if that has solved the problem. So keep your fingers crossed for me. I really hope that it has. I will obviously let you know in other videos whether it seems to be working. I mean, obviously now I'm terrified that it's going to um, fill up really quickly. I don't know why I'm terrified, because now I obviously know that I could just delete the app and reinstall it again. But, oh, I don't know. Sometimes <laughs> things um, concern you when you kind of then think rationally, why does that? Right. Anyway, so that's my literally going to be my highlight of the day. I'm sure that I've mentioned this before, but um, at night, at dinner, we all have to say what our highlight of the day was. It's a mindfulness thing. Um, so we've done it for a really long time now. Um, let me just check, I'm in frame. I'm filming now that I've been sat there saying how great it is that I'm sussed and sorted, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a mindfulness thing and um, I think it just focuses your attention. I'm just going to zoom in slightly and move back slightly. I, it's a mindfulness thing and um, I think it's kind of encouraging positivity and um, I guess gratitude really for the little things in life that sometimes just go unnoticed and um, you know sometimes you might think you've had a rubbish day or a boring day so when at night we then say you know what was your highlight of the day it's just the ability to really focus your mind a little bit and think through your day and the chances are your day actually did have one or two nice moments um, and I know that I have talked about this before but even if those moments are, <coughs> excuse me, you know, seeing a really pretty bird or, you know, seeing a really gorgeous flower or something like that, it just... Um, I guess refocuses the mind a little bit so I really like doing it and um, as I say we've done it for a really long time so when I say oh that's my highlight of the day I know that sometimes I read a comment and it's just the most lovely comment and I might comment back and say that's my highlight of the day I genuinely mean that you know when we then sit down for dinner that will be my highlight of the day um, so, yeah, my highlight today, I'm pretty sure, is going to be freeing up that space on my iPad. Unless, like I say, it transpires that I haven't freed up the amount of space that I have. And, yeah, in which case it will be probably my low light of the day. No, I'm joking. You don't obviously do a low light because that would defeat the object of the happiness and the, you know, positivity. So, yeah, we don't do a low light. Right. So that's my double page spread for the middle, which I just think looks really pretty now. That tab is still accessible um, to the side, whoops, which is nice. And obviously, I mean, it's flapping around a bit. So I'm just going to actually adhere it slightly more to that page. Oops. Just with a little dab of glue there. Like that. Because then that just takes it to the... The edge of the page a bit more which actually now it's covered up it needn't have even been glued onto that pocket at all but obviously at the time I didn't know really where I was going with the page so I really like how that looks and I hope that you guys really like it too so we'll just have another flick through see what other pages we have got <coughs> excuse me okay I've already got um, a frog in my throat so who knows Maybe I'm being ambitious to think I'm going to be doing four videos today. I seem to be struggling here on the first one. Right, I have got this piece here, which is just like one of those opening flip books. I'm going to just weigh that down so it's not casting a shadow. Um, what other pieces have I got? Oh, they're all flip books that I've pulled out there. Oh, 
Really? Have I not pulled anything else out? Hmm. Isn't it annoying sometimes when you uh, think that you've done something and you haven't? Uh, just having a look through because I'm sure I pulled out some other bits the other day and now I'm wondering if I literally imagined it. Maybe I didn't pull out any other... Maybe I didn't. I probably did, to be honest, but just obviously now I can't remember. Oh well, never mind. So the reason I have um, picked this piece up is because this is the one that we did last time with the envelope, which obviously the envelope flap is over the other side, and I just thought if any of it does sh <laughs> show, then this obviously ties in slightly with that colouring. So just need to decide if this is going to be a double page spread what would look good together on the page so I've got this lovely I assume it's a heron I've torn the name off so now I'm again stumped and just show my complete ignorance as to what animal is what oh, always embarrassing when you do things on video and then you might have to mention something that you're not quite sure of <laughs> and that seems to just happen all the time to me anyway all the time when I go to say something and I think oh I'm not sure how to pronounce that or oh I'm not sure whether that is quite a fact so uh, yeah it can be slightly slightly worrying I'm just tearing all these animals off because then I can just view them slightly better as to how I want them. Now, these are also flips, so obviously I don't want to have a flip and a flip. So I'm just going to pull my mass made box back in. Again, I just apologize now because obviously it's right in the camera view. So I do apologize, it's, um, that's the only way it will fit onto the desk. And actually, the only other thing that we didn't use yet are these envelope style pockets. Well, I don't know whether it is the only thing that we haven't used, actually. It might be that there are others, but I just can't remember them. So I'm going to just pull in. Right, I can't decide. So I've pulled out a couple or a few. I might change my mind on using that particular flip maybe let's have a look so now I'm wondering would I be better off popping that there covers up quite a bit of that and we can put a ruffle down the side and that would cover up that envelope so that might be better so let's have a look I'm going to just lay my animals out all I'm trying to do is um, get a feel for you know what I would like to do here so let me just pull in again pull back in those other flip books that I've just put away because I might decide actually you know that one particular thing goes really well or something like that um, got the brown got that one I and mean, I have got this um, know whether that's quite right sorry again this is a little bit like watching paint dry I realize mm. this is the first page really that I've come to and thought oh I'm not quite sure now I think the others have come together you know reasonably easily might be that I need a couple more animals actually out of the book I don't know, maybe not. Right, let's make a decision and just go with it. So, could have the ducks and the, maybe the heron. How would those look together? I mean, they have got blues and blues, haven't they? Let's just, just have a look. Oh, what's happened to my ducks? Oops, they're there. I'll tear around these slightly more. 
so to make them you know better size to how they're likely to be on the piece check the time actually because I might be being a bit ambitious to think I'm going to do this double page spread especially as I can't even seem to or something disgusting on that book page I mean that's the only thing buying the used books isn't it you just can't odds what's actually on there right okay got rid of that Let's have a look. No, I don't like him on there. Oh gosh, decisions, decisions. Right, let's pull this one in. Oh, I quite like him on there. Don't know about the ducks now. Let's just swap them. Hmm. Let's just have a play around. Got this one. That's quite nice. Oh, weirdly, that is quite nice. I don't know. Don't know why, because that's actually quite red. But you know, it's got very minimal green and blue in it. Let's have a play with that and see whether we can tie those bits in. Actually, I also had this gorgeous image. Would that be better? Just double check. Because you don't want to make the wrong decision, do you? Maybe I prefer it like that, I think. Yeah, I think probably I prefer that. But I will feel I have to add something yellow there. So again, I've just suddenly thought of those gorgeous flowers that Laura gifted me in the yellowy orange you know they would obviously tie the two bits together really nicely so right let's go with that as a start point and obviously might change change my mind yet but <laughs> hopefully this is going to be my starting point okay so I'm going to tear my image down slightly more Okay, and again, same with this one. Just going to have to tear off a bit of his eggshell. Which is a shame, but... Okay. Okie dokie. So, we have it like that. Now, I'm just wondering what colour ruffle piece that I could use. Um, I mean, yellow would be good. Let me just have a quick look through. I know this is pretty boring for you guys, so sorry about that. Uh, as I say, I did stitch some ruffles yesterday with um, those lovely fabrics that Laura had gifted me. I have got this one with some yellows on it. I mean, not that that particularly then goes with anything else on the page, but it does at least pick up the yellow from the chick kind of cute isn't it I mean obviously I've got that one again that we just used no I don't think so right okay I'm just going to keep this here for a moment I might change my mind but um, you know, maybe we will go with it and weirdly enough I just that second spotted the cockatoo and thought actually maybe he would be better he's got a touch more yellow on him yeah I think I'm gonna go for that instead so right let's just get started here before I'm here literally the whole day again just dilly-dallying around not just you know making a decision right let's just tear that down oops so it's a lovely day here really sunny really nice again it's another one of those gorgeous sunny 
sunny and cold days. Really love those. Okay, just going to tear that down there. Not that you will really see the back of that picture because obviously that ruffle's pretty humongous and we'll cover it up. But let's just pop this on here like that. Oops. Okie dokie. Just press that down with my dry wet wipe. Okay, so I'm going to just um, pop the journal out of the way for a moment because, you know, it's creating a bit of a shadow. So if I just bring in my ink, just ink around this a little bit. Oops. And actually, as part of the mass making, I had lots of people say, oh, you could cut the top of the envelope. Yes, obviously, that's absolutely you know awesome idea um i haven't just because sometimes my envelopes are a little bit flimsy um actually this one feels quite strong so i probably could get away with it with this um but yeah sometimes i have noticed they're a little bit on the flimsy side so that's the only reason why i didn't do that um but as i said i think these are probably quite strong actually and can probably can probably take it so i might might chop that open in a moment so I'm just having a quick look seeing what I've got here to the side not really keen on the the pink showing on that label um, just got a bunch of stamped images here that I've been using obviously in other things so I always love those postcards they're just awesome um, Again, let me just put in Rachel's labels. Just going to cut this one down a bit, so cut quite a bit of the border off. Just making it slightly smaller. Okay. Just wonder whether I could kind of like this like that so let me just pull the journal back in again so if we were having that like that let me just pop my scissors down to weigh that page down and then we're going to have the bright fun ruffle down the side here and then just have that yellow flower here oh that looks really pretty doesn't it Right, okay, here we go. So I'm not going to do the um, top of the envelope because also it might get covered by the ruffle a little bit, in which case that would be a bit of a vulnerable place for getting torn. So I'm just going to stick the envelope down and I'm going to do it on three sides so that it can be a little pocket here to the side. Like that. Actually, get, push that over slightly. Okay. No, it's stuck already. Okay, and then quite like these, maybe like that. So I'm just going to have this label, which actually I could pop this label down as a little pocket in its own right. So, oops. That, just on three sides just there like that and I'm just going to have that little postcard there so I'll just ink that up a bit just pop that to the side come on and then probably this page, um, you know, we'll have to come back to on another video before I just sap up everybody's entire day. So, um, 
yeah that looks really pretty like that so I'm just going to glue this ruffle down here at the side and I'm going to have it at a sort of curve so run my glue oops come on come on glue play the game like that okay Okay, right, so that's my ruffle, and then, oops, pulled it, pulled it up now, and obviously it might just pop a little bit of glue, you know, if your ruffle is not quite glued down, I think this is why I've been applying the glue to the ruffle really, rather than the, the book, since I've had this glue, and why it makes a difference since I've had this glue is just beyond me, but. I think it's because the hot glue, it literally sticks it instantly. Where this glue is pretty instant, but not as much so. So then I'm just going to have my little yellow flower. Do we want it on the ruffle? Oh, let's just check that I'm in frame now. I'm right at the bottom of the page. Yep. Or here. That could go over there. Just coming out. quite like it there okay so we're going to just glue this on like that and then I will have a look and see whether I've got a button or something to put in the middle of that could have no that looks quite drab doesn't it in comparison to the yellow I'm not going to do that. Oops, come on. Let me just pull those yellow ones in as well because um, there are these tiny ones as well. So I think what I do is put a tiny one in the middle. Oh, that tiny one, it just looks so cute because it just looks like his um, crest up there, doesn't it? Okay. So, yeah, I might look for a button um, for there. I'm not sure yet. Obviously, I need to just cut my ruffle here because it's a little bit long. That's it. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to glue that here at the end because obviously now it's got a sort of vulnerable stitch point. You know where I've snipped it where it had been stitched on the sewing machine so that's okay it's now glued in okay so that's probably all we've got time for because we're up to now 53 minutes so I'd be being a tad ambitious I think to um, try and get this page done as well but hopefully you're liking the um, journal as it's coming along and hopefully you'll join me again next time for another um, episode so thanks very much and see you all soon thanks then bye